Steve Kovac, of course, here with that. So what um, what have you been able to figure out with this? Yeah, Scott, so let me explain what's going on. Apple shares were actually up as much as 3% today, but they went negative on this headline from the information saying the company is cutting production of the iPhone 14 Plus. Now, that's that larger screen model that went on sale about a week and a half ago. Now, th this report was only citing one supplier, so it's really difficult to tell how accurate it actually is. And we've heard similar reports since the iPhone 14 launched in September about a lack of extra iPhone demand on top of the original expectations. Still, Scott, most analysts predict Apple can show revenue growth for the iPhone segment, even if unit sales are flat. That's thanks to the strength in demand for those more expensive pro models. In fact, we've heard some reports that Apple's shifting production from the regular models to those pros. By the way, I just got this note earlier from Jordan Klein, an analyst uh, from the desk at Mizuho, throwing cold water in the report, saying, quote, this article sounds more like a joke to catch clicks and eyeballs, adding it's only based on two sources across Apple's vast global supply chain. Scott, we hear this every iPhone cycle. There's uh, some concerns about demand and sales, and then we get the real results. So look, the reason why the stock reacted so much to this, the iPhone needs to be strong because there's tons of headwinds facing Apple right now. There's evidence App Store sales could be down for the last quarter, plus all those warnings we've been getting from Microsoft and others about demand for computers and tablets just falling off a cliff. And look, we'll get the real data next week, earnings next Thursday. We'll get the first peak in the iPhone demand for the first weeks of sales. By the way, Scott, Apple declined to comment on their super work. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Uh, but nonetheless, it was a late-day tape bomb that hit shares of Apple, caused the market to lose a little bit of its steam on this second day uh, in a row of a rally. But we'll continue to follow that. Shares getting a rebound here in overtime. We still have Alex Kantiewicz with us. I think we do. You want to um, weigh in on this report that seemed to, you know, upset shares for a minute? I think the market reacted, you know, the way that, that I think makes sense, right? A little bit of a decline and then a rebound to somewhere in the middle. And, and I think what Mizuho says is, is um, you know, directionally accurate, right? We need the information not only to speak to the suppliers making the 14, but also the suppliers who are making that more expensive phone. And if it turns out that this is just demand shifting from the lower uh, uh, price point phone to the higher price point, phone and Apple ends up in exceeding revenue, you know, then this story really painted an, an incomplete picture of what was happening. So um, I, I think you need sources on more on, on all those ends. I think you need more than one source. You know, it's interesting to hear this piece of data. Right. Uh, but I, I don't think it tells the full story. Yeah. Joe, I mean, we're looking ahead to the Super Bowl next week. Right. All these earnings from these mega caps. It's you say it's critical to be able to back up this two day move that we had. If you want to believe in it or fade it, the only way you can believe in it is if those companies deliver next week. I'm sitting here thinking to myself that next week is even more important because it's confirmation, potential confirmation on overcoming the recessionary concerns that we have. It's clear that corporate management is navigating through an economic contraction, whether it's financial institutions, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, whether it's Netflix or whether it's United Airlines, they're navigating through those recessionary fears far greater than we expected. Next week, you will get the final confirmation in that process. And we've got something building here that potentially could be more than just a short term bottom, if that's the case. Yeah, well, I would say the death of uh, earnings are greatly exaggerated at this point, uh, given the early part of this season, but certainly better than feared. I'm going to leave it there for the time being. Joe, thank you. Shannon, thank you as well. I'll see you guys later on. Alex, my thanks to you always.